Hello everybody, today we'll be adding a section to our app where we can add shapes by tapping and either we can animate them or we can move them around the screen with motion. The first thing that we will do is create the motion scene. So it's just the view where we're going to be tapping to add our circles and then animating them or moving them around. I'm going to be adding these two convenience methods. One of them is the random offset that I'm going to be applying to each circle when animating them so it's not uniform. Same goes for the second one, which is random offset position so that each circle is created with a different offset. And that way, the views are not laid on, on top of each other and we can actually see them. I want to add shapes when the user double taps. So that's why we're going to use a on top gesture with count two. Since the for each is going to start empty because we're not going to have any shape created by default, we need to add also an invisible view. In this case, it's going to be a rectangle with fill color clear so that we have the user has somewhere to tap. We are also missing adding a content shape so that the user can tap anywhere on the screen, on the, which is the C stack, so that we call the on tap closure. Okay, let's try double tapping. And there we have our circles with an offset, which is what we want. Next, let's add the two buttons that we're going to use to animate or move the shapes with motion. Let's create a view model that helps us keep track of the animating state and the motion of the shapes. Okay, so let's begin with the first one, which is animating the shapes. The animation here is just applying the random offset. So that's what we're going to do with the offset modifier. We call the helper method that I just created if the view model indicates that we're animating. Because we're going to be animating each shape, let's put all of this in a group for performance measures. And then let's apply the animation to the group. We're going to use a spring animation. So 
0 0.5 to each of the values. And what was that new? Ah, I'm not sure what that new parameter value was. And then we'll apply repeat forever since we want this to animate constantly. And because we want them to animate back and forth, we're not going to set the auto reverse to false. If it isn't animating, that is if the user taps again the animate to toggle it off, we're going to apply a linear animation with duration zero. Oh, it seems like the value that I ignore is actually new and the previous implementation was deprecated. Let's fix that then. We need to pass in an equatable value just to monitor for changes. Okay, then let's just pass the is animating flag. All that we're missing is calling the view model when we tap animate. Let's try running this. Okay, let's add a couple of views. Let's not tap on animate. And there we have our animation. With the animation ready, let's move now to the motion. First, let's just add the empty method that we have in the view model here when we tap. And then for the motion, the thing that we're going to do is actually just applying a different offset to our shapes. An offset that's also going to be in our view model. When the motion changes, I mean, when the user is moving the device, what we're going to be changing is just this offset in the view model. We are not going to allow the user animating and moving the shapes with motion at the same time. So when something is activated, it deactivates the other one. We also seem to have some warnings here when building. We didn't have them before in the previous video. That is because we are now in iOS uh, 15 beta 4 and the naming for async change, it was not deprecated and now instead of uh, just writing async, we write task. Let's go on and modify that for every other warning. Okay, the warnings are gone. Now let's go to create the class that we will be using to track the motion of the device. That's gonna be the motion service. The library that we're gonna need to track the motion of the device is core motion. Let's create a protocol for our service. Right now it's just gonna have one method, which is get string, and it will return and an async string which is one of the new features released by apple in this wwdc what it does is you can iterate over an async stream just like with an async sequence but the catch here is that you're not going to get all of the values at the same time like a normal stream you don't know when the values are going to arrive you just wait for the next one and you do something with it and that's what this service is going to return on each iteration, the async stream is going to return a tuple of doubles that will represent the x and y coordinates. The tool that we're going to use from Core Motion is a CM Motion Manager. We're going to initialize it. We don't need to create one every time that we're monitoring for changes. We just turn it on and off. It is important that we um, first check if device motion is available on the device that we're running and if it is already active so that we don't uh, monitor twice or the worst case, we try to monitor in a device that doesn't support it. We'll leave that method as it is for now and then move on to stop monitor, which follows the same logic. We check if device monitor is available and if the uh, monitoring is active or not. 
to stop monitoring, we just call stop device motion updates on the motion manager. You may have noticed that there were other methods in the motion manager regarding the gyroscope and the accelerometer. We are not going to use those. We're going to use motion update. Why is that? Because the motion updates are, have already factored in the gravity and the noise that can be caused by other environmental factors. So it is much easier to produce our effects with motion updates. OK, now let's move on to conforming the motion service protocol. So our adapter will return an async stream, which we're going to create here. Now, why are we not returning the motion manager if we could be listening to that? That's because we're going to handle all of this from here, and then the view model will only need to worry about listening to the changes passed on to this stream. When we create an async stream, we're provided a closure where we need to handle a continuation, and this is how we're going to communicate with the stream. One of the things we can set on the continuation is what happens on termination. Well, when the user is finished with the async stream, what we're going to call is stop monitoring since that's, that's when we don't care about the motion updates anymore. Then you'll see that term continuation has other methods like yield. This is what we're going to call from our device motion updates to update the stream. We have now to pass this continuation to start monitoring where we can configure, where we can update the continuation when a device motion update arrives. Oh, and we seem to be having an issue here. We cannot pass a trading closure because it is escaping. And apparently what we need here is an ad sendable. First time I'm encountering this, by the way. OK, one thing that I was missing learning was that there's a new protocol, sendable, which means that the object is safe to use across concurrency domains. Because functions can conform to protocols, we have the annotation at sendable. So now here, when we, we can still declare this trading closure, we will call stop monitoring, we'll get this error. And what we're miss, missing here is just adding the at sendable annotation. And notice that we have the weak self here, so we need to declare weak self in this annotation because self cannot be captured in an at sendable protocol. At least not here because self is motion service adapter, which is not sendable. All that our stream is missing now is getting updated when the motion device updates occur. To monitor for updates, we need to specify an operation queue and then a closure that we're going to execute each time an update happens. We can get the gravity, for example which is what we're going to use when the user tips the phone from one side to the other. It also comes with an error, so only when an error doesn't occur is when we're going to update the continuation. Let's also add a print statement so that we know that our um, CM Motion Manager is receiving updates. And let's also call the yield function for the continuation. Remember that we specified there was a tuple, so we're going to pass the x and y values. We want to stop the, we want to be able to stop the stream. So that, that's going to be the second method in our motion service. To stop a stream, we need to call finish on the continuation. So we're going to uh, keep a reference to the async stream continuation. And here we just call finish. One more thing here. I'm following this example by Apple, and when we 
initiate the string, this device, mo device motion update that we're going to be doing, we're actually going to call this in another task. So we're going to call task.detached. The example that I'm following from Apple, by the way, is um, where they declare async stream. And in this example, they set the digits and they yield in a detached task. Their, their documentation is actually deprecated. We don't use any more detach, it's task.detached. With our motion service ready, let's add it to our view model and update the view. Every time we get a value from our stream, we're going to call a method to update the offset. A reminder here that the add main actor annotation to a method means that this is going to be executed in the main queue. We're going to get the x and y values and we will transform that to a CG size, which will be the offset. Okay, so after we get an, a stream, because this is a function call from the view, we need to initiate another task. And here we will use the new for await, where we specify a variable, in this case, gravity, that we will get from our stream. Let's also add a flag so that we can toggle on and off the motion monitoring. Core motion doesn't work on simulator, so you'll have to hook a real device for this. I have mine here sharing screen. And okay, let's add some views. Animate works. Now let's toggle the motion monitoring. And there we have it, the views are moving only a little bit. And when we tap on toggle motion, nothing stops. The device updates keep arriving. Let's see what's going on. Okay, first, it was a little bit hard to tap the buttons. They are too close together. So we'll add some spacing to the V-Stack. Okay, that takes care of the view now. The circles were moving so little because I'm setting the offset each time to that when actually if the user is tilting what we want to do is that those values start adding up. And then for some reason in the motion service it wasn't stopping the monitoring. Oh it's because I'm not assigning the continuation when initiating the stream. Let's try running again with these fixes. Let's go to motion. Let's add some shapes. Let's toggle the motion and start tilting. Much better. Let's try stopping and it also works. And that was all. Core Motion is one of the many libraries that we can now integrate with Swift's new asynchronous tools. Although setting async stream was a bit challenging, it paid off. In the view model, it was much simpler setting a four hour wait and then just receiving values. And when it stops, 
sending, there's nothing that we have to do or change. I had a lot of fun doing this one. Hope you liked it. Bye.